Yo, Mia, it's showtime. Mm, it's about time. You think you're gonna beat my time on this mm. spring? Panaka, let's not act like I'm not the one who taught you everything you know. <laughs> I'm still the best between us. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for you to prove it. So, three, two, one. Go. Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another Yasuke, a Lost Descendant Development Report Showcase. It's been a while, hasn't it? My name is Evan Michael Lee, and I'll be here with you throughout your experience playing this game as your guiding narrator. Let's get started with what we have today, shall we? But first, let's take a trip down memory lane on how development has progressed on Yasuke. Back in 2021, Yasuke was originally going to be based solely on the real historical figure's time. However, it wouldn't be that much longer until we decided to take our story to the future. To his descendant. Tanaka took his first steps in Unity, with mostly a visual tech demo to start understanding what we want. But it didn't take long until we'd bring him into the all-new Unreal Engine 5, which is where development has continued to take place since. Progress was slow, but we were still learning, progressing, and figuring out how to make a game. But as time had continued, we started to get the hang of it, understanding what we were looking for within this game, and you could maybe even say mastering some features and ideas. Fast forward to October 2022. We were then showcased at the Black Voices in Gaming event with a glimpse of gameplay in our trailer, but it was mostly cinematic to reveal the main villain throughout our story. Oda Nobusora. However, unknown to the public was that the snippet of gameplay shown was a 15-minute gameplay pre-alpha to begin talks with investors. Many were interested but wanted more. As much as we could have just updated slightly to add extra, we rebuilt from the ground up. Which takes us to January 1st, 2023, the art style update. I'm a jiggy jiggy guy, look at my chain, chain, chain. A jiggy jiggy guy, look at my chain, chain, chain. Our workflow and pipeline for both visuals and gameplay started to streamline, and we now had the exact goal of what Yasuke was supposed to be. We then showcased this in June with our trailer at Summer Game Fest, Future of Play. So... You're the one that spoiled brat with daddy issues was worried about. <laughs> no Busora sent you then, huh? And you are? Kenny fucking Lawrence. Once I was lost. Is that a name we're supposed to know? Or? The one and only Patriot of the West. He's out of his damn mind. Let me tell you a little story. I really don't care. Yeah, I like Patriots. Really killing Man's a man. Arms to weapons. That's what kept me on. But how lucky I was to get an invitation for a different kind of job. Boulder gave me a gift. One of those Dan Ketsu things y'all have. It's time for me to get in on the fun. Even if we're not yet strong enough for Rhoda, this is still our step four. So I would let someone like you get in my way! You're not what I was expecting for the so-called infamous Tanaka Yasuke. I'm interested to see where your story goes. I'll make sure to bring out your best potential against the Oda clan. So we can free the people of Neon Koku, no matter what. 
showcasing it to you all in depth which brings us to today we're halfway through the six month development with our chapter one demo after having received prototype investment and it's time for us to now break down how exactly your gameplay experience is going to be like playing Yasuke a lost descendant here we've loaded into a small playtest sandbox to showcase each of the mechanics in store for you let's first get started with the movement the whole premise of this game's movement is parkour, getting from A to B in the most stylish and efficient way possible. Of course you have your standard moving around and sprinting, but let's get into parkour specifics. First up, vaulting over objects. This has been done with impressive technology that detects the last footstep Tanaka was standing on before hitting the object to be vaulted, which then chooses which animation to be played to correspond. Additionally, vaulting isn't limited to one preset type of environmental object. Lengthen an object or stack multiple next to each other and Tanaka's animations will be able to adjust to fit what he's vaulting over. To pair up with vaulting, you can also slide under objects, vault up taller walls and dash. Now that takes it for movement on the ground, let's kick it up a notch. It wouldn't be a parkour system if you couldn't wall run, you can do exactly that. With an omnidirectional movement system, you can wall run in all directions as well as sliding down with your sword being stabbed into the wall. The next two features include some of the environment parkour options you may find during your time playing. You probably saw these yellow trails twisting and turning all around the map, and this is exactly what you're probably thinking, rail grinding. As for the second, that would be pole swinging. Be sure to time your jumps correctly, as depending on when in the animation you press to jump off, Tanaka's distance and height of the jump also changes. Now if you thought that was all our movement options, you'd be mistaken. It's time to take it to the skies. Tanaka possesses an ability named Shiryoku, which allows him to push and pull objects at will, including himself. This allows for two main movement features in air, his air dashing and the Shiryoku swing. Tap the grapple button to simply point zip to the aimed location or hold it to begin swinging from the point marked. Momentum is key with this feature, so understanding the right times to use which will help you use it effectively. That wraps up the movement features we'll be showing for now, but there's more to come in the future. Now it's time to move on to combat. On the hilt of Tanaka's blade, you'll see there's an animal head, to which this is what we call a Donketsu Totem. This is what holds his power set, as well as many others within the world of Yasuke that you'll come to meet. Tanaka's in particular is the animal Donketsu, which gives him the ability to replicate the characteristics and movements of particular animals. Let's unsheath his blade to show how within combat he uses three different animal stances. Lion, the most balanced out of the three. Cheetah, the quickest. and Rhino, the heavy hitter. Each stance comes with a base light and heavy attack combo string as shown here. Starting off with Lion's light combo string. Now it's heavy. Next is Cheetah's light string. And it's heavy. And finally Rhino's light string. And it's heavy. Additionally, if we resheath our blade, you can see that Tanaka also has an unarmed moveset with his fighting style being based on Shoryu Karate with a mix of boxing. Now if you think we'll only be fighting on the ground, you'd surely be mistaken. Hold down the light action button to launch your enemy up with you, leading into air combat. Just the same as before, each stance has its own light and heavy string in the air giving you even more options and variations of combat. Starting off with Lion's light in-air combo string. Now it's heavy. Next is Cheetah's light in-air string. And it's heavy. 
But finally, Rhino's in-air combo is a little different. Rhino's light attack simply gives you a jump stagger to keep the enemy in the air. However, its heavy will viciously slam them down. Additionally, whilst in the air, you can hold down your attack button in any stance to then pierce and drag the enemy down to the ground with you. However, you don't have to stick to only one string for a combo. Change stances mid-combo to stylishly take out your enemies in the way you want. Technically, there's one more stance, that being the guard stance. By default, it works as your block button and being able to evade around the enemy whilst locked on. However, this guard stance will be able to be upgraded to include things such as parries, phases, and more. Now, if you remember the Shiryoku ability mentioned prior which allows Tanaka to push and pull objects around, this is also additionally used in combat but with a separate button being the Shiryoku Combat version. This allows you to not only pick up and throw applicable environment objects, but push and pull enemies toward and away from you too. Now if you've gotten an enemy's health to a low enough required amount, you can finish them off with a takedown as displayed here. Additionally, if the enemy you are trying to take down is close enough to a wall, you can hit them with a wall pin takedown instead. Depending on the stance currently active when starting, it would change the wall pin takedown animation being used. And finally, we aren't going to go too much into this as we'll show it more in depth at a later date, but each stance comes with its own super attacks and style attacks. Super attacks are skills used within your general combos and gameplay, some that help offense and others that help defense. For example, the rhino stance being able to stop and summon a wall by holding the heavy button. This wall can also be pushed by Shiryoku, so keep that in mind. Now, style attacks are your big hitter ultimate attacks. Once again, each stance comes with their own one, including unarmed. You'll be able to unlock new ones and select which to use, but for now, here's where we're going to show you one of the cheapest. And one for unarmed. Now that's going to wrap it up for the features we'll be showing off with combat here, but once again, there's even more to come and be revealed later down the line, including team combat. With all that said and done, here's some combo potential examples on how you can wreak havoc against the Oda clan with Yasuke's game. <laughs> Some good friends and some bad ones too. Not to mention an enemy who did tend to fool. I've been a good guy. I'm a bad guy. The way my back will change. Any day they can't be. I've been a good guy. I'm a bad guy. The way my back will change. Any day they can't be. Once I was lost. Now I'm found. Once I was lost, but 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 now I'm found. That's enough of the playtest demo level, however, now using everything we've learned here, let's showcase a quick run through a dungeon crawler test level. But keep in mind, our game is a semi-open world adventure, but this would be just one of the many varied genres of gameplay levels you'd come across. Play with me, play to lose. 
Check me, round the group. I'm becoming what I fear. Man, your mama was in Gandhi, see me. Tell her, I end on me. But she wanna be with a BIG. I say, let's six feet reach. You when your bubble come bubble and dash, I go. Kuna kaso, I go. I can't imagine what you've seen. Pama DMs, I go. Wondering, I'm go to teach you. Who know the white box? My shorty. Tell me what you see. Not a damn body, can be. Are you voting like a belly dancer? Different shorty, baby, are yeah, you an actor? Give me your muscle, you want to answer. If you want me, if you want that, call me Nike, baby, right in no caps. When I beat her back, then she wanna do that. But I swear I don't ever do this twice, no cap. Let me tell you that. For those who wanna dance, go feel the vibes now. And that's it for this development report on Yasuke, a lost descendant. Be sure to wishlist the game on Steam as well as follow our social media for updates and oh, one more thing. Do you want to be a QA tester and play the current build? If so, head to the top link in the description to fill out a form and hope to be chosen. We can't wait for you to see what's next for Yasuke, a lost descendant, and we hope to see you on the front lines at Neon Koku. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. Yasuke.